Well, good evening, Logger community. I'm Ted Merriam, class of 2005, and I'm the president of Puget Sound's Alumni Council. Currently, I work at Microsoft in the San Francisco Bay Area, supporting customers Google and PayPal. And while it's been 15 years ago since I joined Microsoft upon graduation at UPS, I was an alumni connection that actually got me my job at Microsoft to begin with. And for that, I am incredibly grateful for the power of the alumni network at Puget Sound and for the relationships that fueled my ability to join a first class company like Microsoft as I graduated. So thank you so much for joining Puget Sound's first ever Future Heights Career Conference. Your investment in learning and networking opportunities like this are key to your success as you navigate this exceptional job market that we find ourselves in in 2021. I am very excited to welcome you all to the second keynote for the inaugural Future Heights Career Conference. First, welcome to our students. I hope you had a great opportunity to participate in the variety of sessions this week. Please also join us tomorrow at our student and alumni one-on-one -on -one networking session, where we close out the Future Heights Conference with the student reception with alumni following the evening event at 5 p.m. Pacific. Registration closes tonight at 7.30, so we have about an hour and a half left, so please be sure to register if you haven't. We'd also like to welcome any parents, alumni, or other friends of the university who are joining us for this session. You provide a meaningful role in the Logger Network, and with your help, students are able to reach their future heights, so thank you so much. This evening's keynote features Brian Galicia, who is a Senior Director of Strategic Global Alliances for Business Applications at Microsoft. And incidentally, both Brian and I are not only loggers, but we're also colleagues together. Brian graduated from the University of Puget Sound, which a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Business from um, the university in 1996. Within his career, he has worked in areas ranging from business process, customer relationship management, social and cloud solutions, and has consulted with many companies that utilize Microsoft solutions to enable their digital transformation. You may also have recognized Brian previously as he's come back to campus in the past few years and has provided insight to students through our Alumni Sharing Knowledge Network and presentations on LinkedIn. Additionally, Brian has also hosted our loggers up at Microsoft's corporate campus in Redmond, Washington. In his previous position as a global sales leader for LinkedIn with Microsoft, Brian excelled at helping organizations use LinkedIn as a platform for building efficient ways to connect with their audiences. Brian has utilized the same experience in presenting to college students from all over the country as he helps them best utilize LinkedIn as a tool to navigate from college to career. Brian is an expert in every aspect of LinkedIn, so we're super excited to have him here tonight. And he is here also to teach us how to leverage LinkedIn to expand our own networks and find new opportunities. This is especially important um, as we face various new challenges in 2021. So through this work, Brian was recognized for the highest award at Microsoft, which is the Circle of Excellence and the Platinum Club. And if I can just say from personal experience, um, that is an incredible honor, as I've seen many folks like Brian uh, celebrated for his incredible contributions, not only at Microsoft, but also in the community. So with that, I invite Brian to come off of mute. I see you okay. there, sir. And we welcome you this evening. Thank you so much, Ted. So um, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Thank you for such the kind words. And uh, it's so great to uh, be coming back to the university, albeit a virtual world uh, now, but hopefully back to normal sometime in the near future. So I'm going to turn off my video uh, in a second once I share my desktop here. So um, welcome to um, this session where we're going to talk about how to transform from campus to career, whether you're a senior, whether you're a junior, a sophomore, a freshman, 
or maybe you're an alumni or even uh, someone who's evaluating a high school student who's evaluating um, potentially becoming a logger. Uh, this session is really intended to help you understand how you can take advantage of um, LinkedIn and digital to advance and find your next great next plan opportunity. So uh, some of the things you see visually here, one, it's uh, even though we're not together, we're all virtual at home. Um, it was great to see uh, so much outreach coming out in the various uh, social channels. And I uh, grabbed this picture off uh, Instagram, off the uh, CS website uh, with, gosh, what a, what a great way to amplify this great opportunity virtually to allow each of you to take advantage of this knowledge. The other is that it, this is a latest that I just pulled today where it's kind of astonishing. You think about the number of professionals like Ted, myself, and many people from the university and many of you who have LinkedIn profiles. We're now at over 740 million members who actually have a LinkedIn profile. We're gonna talk about the importance of that. And you put that, it's hard, hard to wrap my head around that because it's like, wow, what is such a amazing opportunity to create a network. And if I look back and I gave myself advice back in 1996, and I feel like I'm dating myself because it seems so long ago, but just the network of opportunity, as Ted mentioned, as he described his introduction, when you find opportunities, whether it's in technology or whatever you decide to do in your career, your network is so important because it really opens the door, not just to friendship and business connections, but the opportunities to get great opportunities to have a conversation. So today in this session for about 45 minutes, and then we'll uh, of course have questions uh, throughout the conversation. Ted's gonna help me be my moderator. So if you do have a question, feel free to put it in the I am window and uh, Ted will interrupt me uh, or pause to make sure I can address some of the things as we go through this content in real time. So we're gonna talk about the importance of LinkedIn. Uh, why, why should you even be thinking about it? If you don't have a profile, the one call to action I would say is that the moment you leave this call sometime today or make it a goal at the end of the week to actually start investigating and create a profile. Second is even as a student, you can never be too early to build your professional brand. And I'll talk about how you start to do that and why that's important. We'll talk about how you get hired. Um, I'm not gonna go deep on a resume or cover letter, or all the things that are required for getting professionally dressed. How do you prep for an interview? But more of, we're gonna focus on how can you utilize the tools to set up the foundation to identify opportunities that you're qualified or you can go after. And then we'll of course have a call to action. So I highly encourage you. Um, I love getting connected with students uh, all the time. Even uh, in the past when I was able to go on campus, please do not hesitate. If I can help out in your career, even Ted or any of the CES or alumni uh, university um, employees on the phone, we are here to help, and that's really the power of, of the network. And so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. We'll talk about personalization. It's so important because I may forget to send a personalized note when you're connecting so I know the context. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I am pretty active, and I do share many different things that's personal and also professional. And then I also highly encourage you to, if you enjoy or if you're just listening to things, you can, you, it's something sparks your interest or mind, Amplify it, put it, uh, put hashtag future heights and it gives me an opportunity to understand who's out there, what content's resonating and you know, I can interact with that content after the session. So you think about what exists today, what are the things that you as students or alumni or what or we're all faced with? I think one is like, wow, students, you guys are, uh, it's amazing and I, I, I can't imagine what you're trying to do and the disruption that we're all feeling. We're all at home. We're all trying to learn and do things virtually and not have the kind of the nice face-to-face -face interaction. But that disruption also is the competition. Like it's super fierce. And uh, Ted alluded to the fact that, gosh, the job market and the opportunity for students, the sky's the limit. There's so much opportunity out there for each of you to find your niche, whether it's not, it doesn't have to be technology. It could be anything that competition because there's so many students trying to apply for those same roles. How do you remain relevant? How do you drive the right type of value proposition so that you're attracting uh, companies to actually want to hire you? All the skill sets, and even if you're not in technology, the ability to leverage technology to your advantage is such an amazing skill set to, to have. And also the ability to have communication skills and the soft skills that are required 
to be able to engage and showcase what your capabilities are and the things that you can bring uh, to an organization. So the one thing I hope does not happen is hopefully this is not the new norm where we're all just sitting at our homes or offices or uh, home offices or whatever it may be where it's all virtual. The fortunate thing is that it's really created our ability fast forward is to learn very quickly into how do we adopt into a digital engagement. But I am itching, similar to you, for the uh, moment that we can re-engage, get connected so we can visually see people face to face. A simple handshake or even a hug is going to be one of those amazing things that I'm going to celebrate when that time happens. But even when we're under this scenario that we're in today, I think one of the great things that it really enlightened is that the ability for us to learn new skill sets and new things and also showing the importance of how do we create relationships digitally? How do we grow our networks and utilize technology and utilize things like LinkedIn to grow the professional networks when you can't meet people face to face? So let's just start with where are places you jumpstart your career? And many of you, as you know, you could be utilizing all these other social networks that are out there um, to drive your engagement with your friends, maybe family, but that's really for your personal life. And if you're a current student today, I highly encourage you still to do that um, because you're a student. You should enjoy that time with your friends and being young and being able to go do the types of things that you enjoy doing. Um, what, what I would say though, is that LinkedIn is for your professional life. It's not something you would post a picture of what you ate for lunch, unless your job was uh, evaluating restaurants or that, you, you know what I mean? Those types of things where that was potentially your job. But LinkedIn is about your professional life and how you professionally engage with other professionals. A good example, and some of you who've seen me do this presentation in the past when I've been on campus, this still resonates with me. When you think about this concept of if you're doing something with donuts, what would that mean on current social media from a personal life? On Facebook, you would say, oh, I like donuts. On Snapchat, or I would say even on TikTok, it's watch me eat a donut. Um, on Instagram, hey, here's a cool photo of my donut. On Pinterest, here's a donut recipe. On Spotify, it would be I'm listening to donuts. And of course, on WhatsApp, anyone want a donut? So you put that in context to what does that mean to a professional network on LinkedIn? These are the types of things to frame up what's the difference between a personal network and a professional social network like, like LinkedIn. So what can LinkedIn do for you? One is it connects you to a professional world. Two, staying informed. It's like your newsfeed on other things that you may use for. It's your professional newsfeed to get a pulse as to whatever your job may be in the future and maybe whoever your manager may be or your CEO or senior level people. It's such a great way to see what people are up to. And as you grow your career and let's say when you graduate and you go off in different places of the world or different states, different markets, different jobs. It's a great way to stay connected to the people you graduated with and the, uh, uh, the professors and the colleagues and the people you've been able to meet because you're able to stay digitally connected even if you're not face-to-face -face connected in a, in a local um, uh, city or market. And also gives you an opportunity to get hired. Um, of course, there's other job uh, uh, solution or job websites, et cetera, that you can certainly take advantage of. I'm not saying that LinkedIn is the only place to find a job, but LinkedIn is that ability for you to build out your professional brand and your career, in addition to getting hired and getting exposed to the right recruiters and people looking for great talent like yourself. So what's the power of LinkedIn? I, I think it's pretty, uh, hopefully was pretty staggering when you saw that um, uh, that, that data point I put at the very beginning where 740 million members exist on the platform today with, I'm sure that the number is much higher now with the students and the recent graduates, but that ability to tap into even a portion of that network is so powerful, not just with the members, but the companies and also the schools. So I still have very fond memories of my experience at the University of Puget Sound. And one of the things I will show is how do you take advantage and it's free, you don't have to pay for anything, but taking advantage of the alumni network of people who denoted that they went to University of Puget Sound or currently go to the University of Puget Sound and being able to have that commonality to create that uh, engaging network. So when you think about building your professional brand and getting noticed, you can imagine when someone uh, goes to your profile for the first time, because 
in the professional world, like Ted, myself, et cetera, when we meet people for the first time, the most common scenario that I do and most of the people that I work with do is they type in the person's name on LinkedIn and they go, how do I know this person? And so the other component is if it's a recruiter and I'm a hiring manager myself, uh, I'm in a global role and I have nine people reporting to me. When I look for new people to potentially build a relationship with to find talent to determine if someone decides in my team to leave or move to their next big sale uh, play, next, their next play of what they want to do next, which is fantastic because that happens. No one person is always going to stay at the same job forever. Being able to leverage the network so that people look at your profile and go, is that someone that I potentially would want to target to have a conversation? Not just managers, but recruiters do the same thing. So that's why it's so important, even if you're a freshman or a sophomore, because I've gotten asked that question, hey, Brian, how, when should I create a LinkedIn profile? I would even argue that when you're in high school, you can create one um, because it is a place where as soon as you start your professional career, i.e. your first job, and it could be any type of job, it could be at Starbucks, it could be at Target, it could be any type of job, that is when you can actually create your personal uh, or your professional network on LinkedIn to start to getting noticed and you can start to build your, your professional brand. So what are the things that drives the recruiter's attention? Because you might be thinking to yourself, well, Brian, I'm just a student. I'm like, I don't have a lot of professional experience. That's really okay because a lot of it just starts with what are your interests? What are your passions? What are you actually doing? Because if you volunteer, maybe if you were like me at the campus, you were involved in so many different things, not just in, let's say the Greek system, but let's say you also did sports or let's say you uh, gave um, um, campus tours like I did uh, early on in my uh, time at University of Puget Sound. Being able to put these specific things as must haves is super important um, because it really starts with who you are and giving that recruiter or manager a point of view to say, gosh, even though you may, you may be starting just out of college, giving that opportunity to get their attention so they start to see, wow, this person at A is very passionate about the types of things we do at this company because they've been following the company, they know everything happening in the industry. Maybe they have shared points of view that enlightens that person and go, I didn't think about it that way. You can highlight those things and build that profile over, over LinkedIn. So of course, you're getting an amazing education from the University of Puget Sound. You should amplify it. You should be proud of it. It should be listed on your profile because it should also denote what are you getting your uh, degree in? And even if you're a freshman, you're un unknown, that's okay. But as soon as you know directionally where you think you're gonna take your degree and estimating when you're actually gonna graduate, it's great to actually put that on there because recruiters look at that. They look at what is that person going to graduate in and when are they gonna graduate? Because if they are recruiting for internships or if they're recruiting for a specific role where it's a full-time job, if they know that person's actually gonna graduate in, in May, it gives you a leg up because that recruiter is going to go, wow, that person is aligned to the degree that we recruit for, the skill sets, et cetera, et cetera, that allows you to get noticed. The second is your profile or your photo. Super, super important. Um, you might think, oh, I have a, uh, I see this occasionally all the time with students where let's say they're at a, a, um, a wedding or at, a, at an event and they're with a whole bunch of friends you can kind of tell that, oh, someone's kind of cropped out. Or if you're at a fraternity or sorority party, of course, I remember those days where I was professionally dressed and I was probably with weird backgrounds behind me. Those are not the types of pictures you want to put on your LinkedIn profile. One of the things, because we all nowadays, everyone has an amazing smartphone that has an amazing camera. It's really simple to actually put a nice kind of business professional dress uh, on and finding a neutral background somewhere where you have a friend or, or someone that actually can take a headshot with your shoulders and above. And it takes not very long to go do that. So important to do that because people with pictures and a professional picture on their profile get so many more views and it sets the right expectations for, because you're not meeting these people face-to-face, -face, it's that first impression that people see when they actually look at your profile. Experience, and I get a lot of questions from students like, well, Brian, I, 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 I have never worked for a company before, but I've had jobs as a babysitter or I've had jobs at Starbucks or at Safeway bagging groceries. That's really good experience because it shows customer service. It shows that you are engaged and you've put commitment to things. And the one thing I always tell people to put on their profile is not just the job, but put things, what are things that you accomplished? What were the outcomes that were delivered by the time you first got the job into when you left? And internships, because some people say, well, should I list an internship? 
of course, you should definitely should do that. You should list things that you were engaged on. And we're going to talk about networking and connecting with the people you're working with, because it's also super important that anyone, for the most part, you come across where you never know whether or not that connection is going to be helpful in the future, but you want to have that connection continue to thrive, even if you move away or take a different job that's totally outside of what the job you took it's still just as good because you never know, it's a, such a small world where you never know, come full circle that 10 years from now, someone that you used to work with or someone you went to school with now works at a company that you would love to work for and utilizing that opportunity to get that to get that network. And then for many of you, like what I did in, in college as well, if you volunteered for something, maybe you uh, served at a soup kitchen, maybe you um, uh, uh, volunteered at your local church, Super important to show that because it shows the passion. It shows the things that you're engaged with where you're not getting paid potentially. So it's just as good experience to show those types of things because hiring managers also look at not only the skills that you were hired for, but also things that you're using your volunteer time to, to do as well. And then the last is there are skills. When you look at your profile, one of the things you might be saying, well, Brian, I have skills, but I haven't been able to show them externally. Granted, I don't have this example when I was in school because we didn't have LinkedIn at the time, but one of the things I would have done if I did have LinkedIn graduating now or get, uh, getting ready to graduate is if I was learning skills within my uh, classes, maybe you're in uh, the leadership program, I would put different things that talk about business leadership or Microsoft Excel or PowerPoint, et cetera, because your professors have probably witnessed you doing those types of things in class, if you're doing good in class and you're engaged and do all those things, you actually could potentially have your professors endorse you for those skills. And so it's a great way because uh, managers and, and recruiters actually go in and do search criteria to say, where are people graduating from? What's, uh, what degree do they have? But they also say, okay, does that, do these people have skills that we may, we may be looking for to actually fill entry level jobs? And if there's no skills on your profile, Unfortunately, you might be doing a great job. You might have those skills, but you would never show up in those search criteria because it was missing that taxonomy of information to allow you to, to, to be seen. Okay, so how do you get hired? Now that you have your profile, and I'm going to show um, towards the end, I'll, I'll uh, share my uh, web browser and go through a couple of real-time examples to show you what you should be doing immediately, hopefully sometime after this uh, keynote session as takeaways. But how do you get hired? How, what are the things, now that you have a profile, what are the things you could be doing? So we know your list is overwhelming. Um, I think the, 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 the top ones, of course, were things that were a top of my uh, list, sleeping, having fun with my friends, and uh, joining clubs, getting good grades. But of course, those other ones that aren't checked, like, wow, choosing a career, researching companies, those are the last things you want to do. But if you are like me and you want to realize, gosh, I want to have a good paying job. I want to be able to have freedom for my parents and do the things that I want to do. I want to live, live in some amazing place. I want to be driving a nice car or have a nice house. All those things take time to be able to build where you want to work and who you want to work for. Because it's one of those things. It's a challenge. Like you could take a job, take a job. But I always encourage people, you have to be passionate about where you work and what you do. And you have to believe in it. And when you do all those things, Work becomes not just a job, but it's something that you just enjoy doing and it just, you don't think about it as work. So how do you get started? One, and I'm gonna show this, you may not realize on LinkedIn, if you go to the University of Puget Sound um, uh, University page, there is a section for alumni. And today, because I, I took the screenshot a couple of days ago, but as of a few days, there are 23,698 alumni um, that have LinkedIn profiles. Imagine the fact that you may not know, I don't know 23,000 alumni, but what I do know is that we have a commonality. We all went to, or currently go to, or you, for you, you're currently going to the University of Puget Sound. And so what an amazing opportunity to find alumni, find loggers that either have jobs that you want to, to do, maybe they work at companies like Microsoft that you want to work for, or they live in a city. Like maybe you want to work in Hawaii, maybe you want to live in Australia. And it doesn't matter what job you do, you just want to live in that city. You can utilize this ability in the alumni page to actually find these alumni that have LinkedIn profiles that haven't made it hidden, but have said certain things that allow you to un understand who those people are and then potentially doing a appropriate reach out. 
And this resonates to what uh, Ted had mentioned is a referral, I don't disagree with this, a referral is the best way to find a job. And the reason for that, if you recall the very beginning where I said the, the market is so competitive, imagine the thousands and thousands and thousands of college students that are graduating at the same time you are. Those same students are try, probably trying to apply for the same job that you would love to get to. So what if your hidden ability was to find someone at that company that can give you a leg up, either make an introduction or put you in contact with a recruiter? That happens because of your network. That happens because you can leverage the people, either A, people maybe that you gradu that graduated before you that now work at that company, or just simply, as we talked about in the alumni tool, someone who graduated way before you and maybe works at a company that you don't even know, but you can create that connection because you we, we all have something in common. We're all proud that we went to the University of Purdue Sound. So how do you do that? And this is where it's it, it, you can start now. One thing you wanna do is you wanna connect with all the people that you may know. So friends, family, classmates, mentors, teachers, professors, people in the career uh, advising area, all those people you can create a personal connection with potentially, it, especially if you know them or if, even if you don't know them, creating a personalized connection point to say, here's why I wanna have a connection with you. And it all starts with not asking for something, but more of here's what I can provide or here's why I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out and making that connection. Because when someone has a point of view or that personalization, they may not accept it, but that gives a better opportunity for that person to understand why you're making the connection versus if you just set, hit connect and there's no context, I would just say that there's a much lower priority that someone is gonna accept that connection because they don't know who you are or the context. It's kind of a stranger knocking your door at your home and would you open the door for a stranger? Maybe, but it's that kind of similar experience where you don't know the context, you don't know why they're knocking on your door. So the other is tapping connections as alumni for help. And so, as I mentioned, when University of Puget Sound students reach out to me, I am more than happy to engage. Um, but the, my, my one thing that sets other students apart is the people who actually take the time, A, to understand what I do, because it's not just, hey, can you help me without taking the time to understand their point of view or what their interests are, et cetera, to find commonalities. So if you find commonalities, you ask specific things and say, hey, we have something in common. Maybe we're in the same fraternity. I was a Sigma Chi at University of Puget Sound. It's, it shows that on my profile. Someone mentions that, immediately I have a connection point with them that makes me feel like, oh, wow, this person did a little bit of work to understand what I do. Or they reference something to say, hey, Brian, I noticed you posted something that that is exactly what I would love to do in my career. Is that something you can, you can help me with? I am more than happy to give time and advice. And there's a lot of people out there that would do the same thing. But it's much harder to do that if you don't provide the context as to why you're doing that reach out. When you think about LinkedIn, of course, you can actually go in there and there's not only finding the connections, but you can go to company pages and or the job side and look for job opportunities. And it's a great way to, A, look at what is the company talking about? Uh, what's top of mind? Because they're talking about things that gives you insight as, A, is that a company you want to work for? As well as what are things that, you're getting insight on about that company that will allow you to have a very good point of view in an interview process to bring up things saying, hey, I noticed the CEO uh, mentioned this or senior leaders of your organization are talking about that. What does that mean to this type of role or having a point of view? It sets yourself apart because it drives the conversation to where it's personalized. It shows that you've done your research and it shows that you really know and have invested the time to understand what's top of mind and how you can contribute back immediately if you were offered uh, a job. Um, set up job alerts. So once you find an opportunity potentially that you're interested, not that you would apply for it, but it gives you an opportunity. Let's say you're a senior and you're, of course, you're not going to graduate in May. So you're not going to actually apply for jobs right now. But what you can do is do searches inside of LinkedIn and create job alerts. So you can get notified of things that you might be interested in. So it gives you an opportunity of who's hiring, what are they hiring for? So it allows you to really brush up whether it in your an internship or maybe your classes to figure out how do you position yourself to showcase that you can you're you have the skills to do that type of job because of the things you're doing to set yourself up um up front and also gives you a sense for what companies are hiring actively hiring or finding people uh for when you're ready to apply for a specific job or role 
And the last is on your LinkedIn profile, you have the ability to follow a whole bunch of things. You can follow the company. Um, so not that uh, uh, you're going to know everything about X company or XYZ, but when you follow a company, it gives you an opportunity to be in the know of what they're talking about because it starts to show up on your LinkedIn feed. You can follow influencers uh, like Satya Nadella or Bill Gates or someone like if you think about, OK, who would you what company would you love to work for? Who is an influencer in that space that you would think, gosh, they give they, they, they talk about amazing things that would give me a leg up as to what's happening in that industry? That information is so valuable. And the last is industry. Like, for example, if you want to be in the game industry, maybe you want to be in healthcare, maybe you want to be a financial advisor. Follow those industries and be an expert as to what's happening. And of course, everything's being talked about the pandemic and what people are doing about it. But it gives you that opportunity to see and hear what's happening by experts that are talking about that in those industries to be very um, uh, informed so that when you do have an interview or an informal conversation with someone, you really can bring up certain things that are happening in their, in, in their, in their uh, job, um, job market. So the last is before I share my desktop, Join relevant groups. Um, you might, you're, you may not know this, but on LinkedIn, there are actually two that I particularly belong to. I belong to the University of Puget Sound Alumni Association, and I belong to the uh, Alumni Sharing Knowledge. You can see that there's over 4,800 members on the Alumni Association group, and there's over 1,800 members on the Ask Network. You can tap into that just by a subscribing. I can't remember if they're someone has to approve you, but because you're a student, it should be pretty easy to get access to it. You can go in there and you see what people are talking about. And also, you'll find that I post occasionally in there if there's a job or something that I find interesting that might be relevant to alumni or current students, you're going to find other alumni or current students, students posting things in there. And it's a great way to get exposed to, A, the alumni who potentially can help you find a job, but also create networking opportunities over time to say, oh, I'd love to get to know that person. That person works for a company that I'd love to be interested in working for. It's all about engagement and trying to start to see the names and get connected with people uh, at, at a digital perspective. So I'm going to take a natural pause again, uh, Ted, and see if there are any questions. And then I'm going to, as I'm waiting, I'm going to scroll over to my um, web browser and um, kind of go through a couple things uh, for the remaining time before we get to uh, Q&A. Sure, Brian. I think this is actually a great um, question and time, especially as you go through the LinkedIn demo here. So what is the difference between your LinkedIn um, account or profile and your resume? Are they essentially a duplicate of the other or should they act as a complement? Yeah, uh, thanks, Ted, for the question. Whoever asked that, I wish I can give you a prize because I love uh, engagement. So Great job for whoever that student or alumni, whoever asked that first question, that's always the toughest part is someone asking the first question. So my point of view, different people have different points of view. My point of view, it's a compliment. It's not to replace your resume and it's also not to duplicate everything you have in your resume on your profile. It's a compliment so that it's most of the time people are gonna look at that information and then they're gonna wanna learn more. And so what I find students do, a best practice I encourage students to do is put some highlights that, cause on a resume, you don't want to, you can't articulate certain things because it's not a, the right place. Like you couldn't, you couldn't put a video, like it'd be really tough to, you have a link on your resume for a video, but you can't really expose that on the site itself. That's where things can shine on your profile because there's much more richer stuff you can do. And that's the point of view is that you should bridge the scenario so that one thing that's on your resume, it should be on your profile. So you wouldn't want to necessarily hide a job. Like I get this question too, is like, um, if all of a sudden someone looks at your resume and they see a job that you've done that shows up in your resume, but they look at your LinkedIn profile and it doesn't show up there, it's going to offer up questions say, well, why did you put in your resume? It's not on your profile. If those are the things where it's a compliment of each other and you want to have it be consistent. So bottom line is they should complement each other and there should be consistency. So whatever you have in your resume should at a very high level at a minimum, have the experience to where it, sh it shows uh, maybe it's slightly different in regards to what you're maybe messaging because there's many more things you can do digitally versus on a piece of paper. But being able to have the consistency would be um, the way that I would encourage students or alumni to, um, to, uh, to, to, to leverage a resume and a LinkedIn profile together. That sounds great, Brian. Maybe you can show us a little bit around the site. Okay, sounds good. So. 
When you think about uh, LinkedIn, of course, everyone, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, it's super simple. It's free to access it because, of course, I remember the days of being a, a student. You're like, ooh, I don't have a lot of money to do these things. All these things I'm going to show you, all free. So the first thing is when you think about your LinkedIn profile, and I'm just going to click on mine, you're going to call out a couple of things. I mentioned it as I was going through the slide show, but it's super critical that these are the minimum things you do. So one is, of course, I can't stress enough, you have to have a professional picture. Don't you do a crop out, don't, again, no offense if you have one, but try to find time to get one that, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to pay money to get a professional picture done, as I mentioned. It's just simply as being professionally dressed and then having a neutral background and having a friend or a family member or someone just use their really good smartphone camera and take a picture of you. Second is have a background photo because I, when you think about your profile and getting started, I always encourage students or anyone at first getting started, you should have a complete profile. Nothing should be generic. Nothing should just not be in place there where someone goes to your profile and like, oh, nothing, there's no background photo. It uses the kind of the generic uh, LinkedIn background. Use something there. And uh, for students, either put a profile of something that you're passionate about. Um, another thing would be if you're looking to get a job, let's say in a specific technology industry or something, kind of put that thematic there where it kind of shows that you're interested in that. Or even better, if you're presenting in front of a group, maybe you're part of Toastmasters, or maybe you're presenting in front of class and someone took an action shot up behind you. I always find that if you're in a picture with a, uh, you could see here, this was the same picture when I was presenting to uh, several thousand people at link, uh, or not LinkedIn, but people who use LinkedIn in a selling engagement, um, using those opportunities to show how you're presenting because it offers up a, a nice talking point, but then it shows, oh, wow, that person was, must have really good uh, speaking skills because that person is speaking to X number of pe people out there. Or another example that I've given out is that um, use uh, background photos of the, of the university. Um, you probably noticed when I opened up my, I briefly, when I had my video camera on, the background photo of my background was the campus. So it could even be just be that. So it highlights the fact of where you go to school. And those are great ways to get started. The other is the fact that each of you at the very beginning, you might notice at the top when you first joined LinkedIn, it uh, your website at the top, or maybe, maybe you didn't notice it, you actually have an opportunity to get a personalized URL. And this becomes so important because you might have noticed, especially if there's alumni on the phone, you might be doing this already. And I encourage everyone to do this is on your resume. This is where that goes back and forth. You want to put your LinkedIn profile on your resume. And it's much better to put your LinkedIn profile if it was personalized, not like Brian Galicia with a whole bunch of numbers and symbols. Because unfortunately, LinkedIn by default, it doesn't know that's who you are. So it, it pens whatever you put as your initial name and it puts a whole bunch of weird numbers, letters and symbols, which is, it's okay, but even better if it's it, it's more polished when you actually have it uh, set up so it's, it's personalized. And the quickest way to do that, because people ask, oh, Brian, how do I change that? Like, wh where do I go? So here at the very top, when you're in your profile, you click on edit public profile and URL, you're going to notice at the very top, there's a little uh, area for edit your customer uh, custom URL. This is where you change it. I'll just uh, forewarn you, if you have a common name like John Smith, unfortunately, I guarantee John Smith is taken. So what you have to do is not get creative and put like, I love cats, because that's not uh, very professional. But use things like uh, maybe a middle initial or maybe uh, when you graduated or something that you can leverage that looks professional, but also kind of maintains your brand through other social channels. I'm not talking about Twitter or Instagram or other places, but what I would say is that try anything you're gonna use your professional brand outreach. Like if you go to my Twitter account, my Twitter is the same as my LinkedIn profile, meaning that if you went to linkedin.com slash in, it's Brian Galicia. If you go to Twitter, it's Brian Galicia. And I do that purposely because when people are looking for me, it's consistent. My picture on both profiles is, well, not the background picture, but at least the picture that shows up is exactly the same because I wanna have and establish that same brand. The other thing while I'm on this page that you wanna do is you wanna scroll down. You wanna make sure that your setting for your profile picture is set to public. And the reason why that's important is because you it's not like uh, Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat where you wanna hide things. Um, unless you're in the FBI or let's say you're in some governmental agency, but in general, you want to have your picture public. So anyone potentially that's looking to hire you, you sh your picture shows up. Um, by default, I believe it just is set to your network, which is okay, but my opinion is your picture and your information should be publicly available unless you're in some type of job that prevents you from sharing these things publicly. 
Um, the other things that I encourage you to do, and I, I see students, it was great, the people who engaged on President Crawford's uh, site, because there were students that were engaging on that, on that content um, that he posted, talking about the Future Heights um, sessions, is that you want to talk about, A, the degree you're in, that you're a current student at University of Puget Sound, but the one thing I also offer up is what year you're graduating. Because I say that and putting it at the top, because at the end of the, uh, basically what people do is that you think about a website or you're doing a search on either Bing or Google, what happens is that you only see what I call above the fold. So people aren't necessarily gonna scroll, especially a recruiter, they may not scroll. You have a few seconds to catch your attention. And the way you catch your attention is having this personalized, a, a professional picture, a background, and the title saying something like, what are you passionate about? Maybe what you're wanting to go do, what your interests are, and the year of graduating. So immediately, not to say that you want to be disqualified, but immediately tells the recruiter, oh, wait a second, that person, that candidate is not a good candidate because they're graduating in two years. Maybe I can think about them as an internship. That's the way to think about it. Or if you do put your, your graduation date being 21, 2021, it immediately signals to the recruiter, oh my gosh, that person is going to um, graduate. Otherwise, a recruiter has to scroll down kind of towards the bottom, and then they realize, oh, that's when the person's going to graduate. It just gives the ability for you as a student to just be quickly, gives the high level information to allow the recruiter, if, they, if you caught their attention, then they're going to scroll down and, and learn more. Um, the other thing that I just Brian, want to quickly, oh, go ahead, Ted. We have actually have a question on, on the above the fold area, if you will, yeah. of LinkedIn. And sure. the question is, how many connections should I have? <laughs> I, I would say you could have as many connections as you want. Um, I personally, even though I'll just show you a little trick here because I don't mind sharing it, but you're going to see here, I have over 5,708 people that um, people might think, Brian, wow, that's a lot of connections. Actually, that is not the number of connections I actually have. This is the number of followers I have on LinkedIn, people just who typically follow me. I actually only have 2,000 connections. And the reason why is I want to keep the connections pretty tight because I connect with people either because I met them before or because someone says personalized outreach. I will typically connect with students as long as there's connection, personalized reasons uh, that they give context to. But the reason why I try to keep my connections tight is because when, especially in my role today, at, when I engage with senior leadership or other managers are asking me, hey, Brian, I'm going to hire this person. Do you know them? And that's happened. When I was accepting connections left and right, I realized, oh my gosh, I was accepting connections with people I really didn't know or didn't have any context with. And someone was asking me, hey, how do you know this person? So now what I've done is when someone reaches out and they see out that first party connection, I typically can say either I've worked with a person that before, I went to school with them, or, oh no, I met that student at um, an event I was, I was speaking at, which is great because there's context there. Um, but the number of followers just ends up being people who don't connect with me, but they just follow the activity that I do because of things, the things I share and the, the role I'm in at Microsoft. So the answer would be, it's up to you. You can have as many connections as possible, but my, my one advice is make sure those connections are ones that you wanna have digital connections with for the long-term. And everything you do, it's all personalized. You never wanna send a connection request without context, without giving a little bit of, Here's why I want to connect with you. Here's some context of, hey, Brian, thank you for the presentation. I mean, not the fact that if you didn't think the presentation was good, but more of this is where I met you and this is why I want to connect with you is, is the advice I'd give. That's great. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, I know we're going to uh, butt up against time. So the last couple of things I'll just kind of comment and, and point out. So in the about section, this is kind of your cover letter. What you'd want to do as a student is you want to talk about things you're passionate about and Billy, be very clear to a potential recruiter to say, here are things that I would love to be considered for. And if you have videos or content of stuff that you've done that will show the skills or the things that you're doing, this is where you can start to put that information in that is a little bit different than your resume because this is interactive. This is where people like the feature thing I have here, these are things I want people in my role to see that allows them to quick, uh, quickly pick, uh, click on it to, again, uh, to, to see that content. So the other thing that I'll quickly show is I mentioned the alumni page. So definitely bookmark this. If you have not gone to the University of Puget Sound um, uh, school page, you definitely want to click on the alumni area and utilize, maximize this opportunity to, to do this. So when you think about, and I'm just going to use an example, one is you can pick and choose the years that someone graduated from the university if you want to kind of get narrowed in your search. Otherwise, you can see here many different filters. You can say, what did they do? What did they study? Um, 
how you connected, what are they skilled at? So for example, of course, Ted and I are in technology, work at Microsoft. This is by no means that you have to work at Microsoft, but you can understand if someone had a psychology degree, wh where do they work? And if I click on that and of course do filters, then you can start to see, okay, these people with a psychology degree, they work at multi-care health systems, Amazon, Puyallup School District, where do they live? That's where you can start to get all that information and you can start to scroll down, see the picture, and then potentially make that outreach so that, again, there's that warm connection because you both graduated from the University of Puget Sound. So utilizing that opportunity to get connected. And you can see here someone with a psychology degree. I don't know, personally know Dave. Ted may know him, but you can imagine there are hundreds of people that went to University of Puget Sound that actually work at Microsoft like Ted and I. Um, right. Yeah, so the last thing is before kind of we close out and um, uh, answer questions is you might have noticed, um, sorry, because I had to minimize it to get behind this, the, the scene. You might have noticed that if you're on LinkedIn, this little open to work area, I'm not gonna do it on my profile because I'm not actually looking for a job, but um, in the recap that I'll share with you, uh, there is a great uh, point of view as to how, um, how you turn this on. And as a student, when you're ready to actually find a job, I encourage you to go turn this on. A, because it doesn't necessarily change your picture. All it does is it puts a little overlay there so someone can visually see, oh, you're actually looking for a job. And it also helps you with your network so that other people are seeing that I'm really apt to, if I know a person and I see that they flash that up there, I'm going to reach out and say, how can I help you? Especially if I know them, because it's, we know a pandemic, it's impacted so many people and it's hard. But what I found is like, it's giving back. It's a great way to give back because if I can expose my network to help someone find an opportunity, I am more than happy to do so if, if I can help. And so this site just gives some quick things to talk about how do you turn that on so that it gives the opportunity for the, uh, basically the LinkedIn network to be notified and recruiters who are using that as a filter to find people, uses them as an opportunity to have that person stand out because recruiters will definitely know that that person is actually actively looking for a job. So that being said, let me, uh, uh, go back to the presentation, Ted, uh, before I close it out with uh, any other questions that popped up on what can you do as a call to action? One is, of course, hopefully you got a, uh, at least a starting point to update your profile. I could spend hours talking about different tips and tricks to do that, but hopefully you got some initial starting points of what you can do to update your profile. One, leverage the University of Puget Sound alumni page, at least bookmark it, because that will be a great way for you to start building those connections and exposing yourself to understand who works where, uh, where do they live, what degree do they, 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 they get to give you that opportunity to get, to, to get connected. When you get connected with peers, faculty, alumni, I would say if you're a student today, definitely connect with your professors, like well, as long as you have a good relationship with them, um, because your professors, guess what? The ones that are connected with students who have now graduated, they're connected to those people that work at the companies you might be interested in. And you may, wouldn't know that unless you were connected to your professor. So it never is too early to connect with your, even your, your mom and dad, whatever they, they do, um, connect with people that you work as internships, et cetera, or even the faculty in the uh, career um, advising area. Use that opportunity to get connected. And then number one thing that I always talk about, as I mentioned, personalization. So uh, the one thing that uh, if you wanna write it down and uh, again, share with your friends or look at it afterwards, this presentation that I ran through is in this website. I also put in links to certain things, uh, the career uh, uh, academic uh, advising page for the University of Puget Sound, a shameless plug for Microsoft. So if you're interested in careers, because we do have specific internships and opportunities for students um, at Microsoft, and also a page from LinkedIn that talks about much more richer things that I didn't get a chance to talk about today in this short period of time but also the LinkedIn um, university page that talks about other things you could be doing as a student. And I also, as I mentioned with the open to work uh, capabilities, I also put a, a link in there too, as to how that's set up. So gosh, I just went through a whole bunch of things. It's amazing that this, we went already through an hour, um, but let me pause and see Ted, what other um, uh, questions may have, uh, may have uh, come up as we now have gotten, unfortunately, to the end of the end of the session. Sure, no, thanks, Brian. And if you wouldn't mind just popping your camera on as we oh, wrap up here yep. as well, I will do um, the same. Um, maybe just one more question as we close out here. And the question um, I think is a good one. It says, I'm pretty introverted. So what are some suggestions for networking for someone like me? 
<laughs> that is a great question. You might think I'm I'm not introverted, but if uh, if you take personality tests, I'm actually an introverted person. I, I think I'm kind of a shell of, of doing that. So when I think about an introverted person, the biggest thing is, is that that's the great thing about digital and LinkedIn is that if you're not comfortable kind of interacting in a face-to-face -face manner, digital gives you that opportunity to be very thoughtful in the words and the comments you put in and use that to your advantage because uh, me as an introverted person, even though, and I say, it's kind of weird for me to say that because I'm in the sales role, but I enjoy like when I'm not in front of people, I actually enjoy being alone. And so, or just with my family, the one thing you could do as an introvert is just be thoughtful on the words and the things you're using and utilize that to create the outreach because you can still uh, create an amazing digital connection because people can see a, your visual face, because even as an introvert, I'm sure that you have a picture of yourself. Talk about the things and utilize the, the platform to share a point of view without having you to verbally say anything, because you have the ability to be very thoughtful in the words you're using um, just on as you're writing things out. That sounds great. Thanks, Brian. Um, as a fellow introvert myself, I certainly appreciate that. So I'm going to um, actually need to wrap us up now, but I do know that uh, staff from Career Employment Services will hang out on the line for a couple of minutes. And certainly, Brian, if you're uh, able to, you're more than welcome to welcome us as well. We do have a couple of more questions in the Q&A manager that we'll certainly um, send over to Brian and or have some of our folks um, answer here as well. But you know, thank you so much, Brian, um, as a colleague and as a fellow logger for joining us this evening. Um, what you shared with our logger community tonight um, is certainly very helpful. I learned some tips and tricks myself on LinkedIn um, and is inspiring and action oriented for our students um, as well. And it wouldn't be surprising to me if you did have a couple more uh, LinkedIn requests after tonight. So to our students, please, again, set some context for Brian on why you're uh, asking him to connect. That would be uh, certainly helpful um, as well. So thank you all for um, attending tonight. Um, and for our students on the call, I also wanted to make sure that you consider for your next steps uh, moving forward as we continue with our conference and wrap up uh, tomorrow. So one of the things you need to certainly think about is how you're going to put this into action. And Brian has uh, called a couple of items to your attention that you can certainly make actionable, but also reflect on the various sessions that you attended over this week, um, as well as from our various uh, keynotes. Um, we're certainly excited for you to use these new skills while connecting um, not only with each other and future employers, but also with our Puget Sound um, alumni. And make sure also that you're signing up for our networking event, um, as I mentioned, as I kicked off the call um, that is taking place. Um, we have 30 more minutes for you to uh, register for tomorrow's event. Um, and be sure to take a look at the alumni participating um, and plan to close out the Future Heights Conference uh, strong as we uh, wrap up here uh, tomorrow. So with that, thanks again, Brian. It's great seeing you uh, via Zoom. Love the background. Yeah. And uh, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes um, to wrap up any open-ended questions as well. But for the rest of you, have a great night. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, everyone. Be well, be safe. I had similar questions. So for example, one of them was, um, how do you reach out to people on LinkedIn without a premium account? Oh, yeah. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have premium. Um, it depends on how, if, if, a, if a person on the other side uh, has a, a kind of, not a block, but one of those things to say, if the only way to reach out to me is if you have a premium account. <laughs> but <laughs> one way to do it is even if you can't send a message, if you get that block, is to send a connection request. And it's not, I always, if anyone in a selling role, one of the biggest mistakes sellers do is they try to sell someone in that connection request. And I say, oh, don't do that. <laughs> but if we want to reach out to someone and you can't send them a message, an, a great way to do that um, in a private way is to use the connection area to then send that, send that, um, that note out. But do it in a, can again, prof professional, personalized way to where they don't feel like they're getting sold to. It's like, why would I connect with you if I, if you're just trying to sell to me, that's, that's, that's the one guidance. Not that we would run that into uh, um, students, but that, that's a, that's a, that's a way to, to work around it. Yeah. Is there, I know there used to be some affiliation with the groups that you could send messages to people who were in the same group. Does that still exist or has that been kind of factored out of LinkedIn with the group? No, I, I, I think if you're in a group, like let's just take the University of Puget Sound alumni group as an example. Um, anyone posting in there, 
everyone will see it. So um, another way to do it is like, if you wanted to call attention to someone in particular, you can at mention them. <laughs> so not to say it's guaranteed they're gonna respond to it, but another way to get engagement um, that Sue's really aware of, because I sometimes at mention her on <laughs> relevant stuff. Like when President Crawford posted, I called out Rebecca and Sue on it. So they just mm -hmm. knew that I posted that. That's another way to draw their attention. Because if you at mention someone in the LinkedIn platform, it then shows up on their feed or creates a little notification to say, oh, someone did something. And then it draws your attention to what that post was. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. I think another question that came in that would be good to have if this person is still on or for the recording is how important is it to post articles or updates on LinkedIn? Is that kind of a nice to have or a need to have? Yeah. So I, my personal opinion is that it's a uh, kind of almost gets to a need to have depending on what role you take. And so what I mean by that is if you, especially as students, one way to get kind of recognized for how much you know about the job market or the industry or the company you're gonna work for is if you're talking about those things, people see it. Like, but that's the cautionary tale. If you're posting things that are kind of like uh, on the personal side, I, I sometimes cringe when I see, uh, uh, family members, um, nieces or nieces, for example, posting things. I'm like, oh no, I wouldn't post that <laughs> because it's things that people would see, even if it's not on the, on the LinkedIn network. So what I would say is that if you stay relevant um, and you create your connections, the great thing is that because of, I create a followership kind of an influencer like status, why that happens is because I'm talking about things that's drawing people's attention. Because if I'm talking about things, not just about Microsoft, but about the industry or about things that's helping other people, then um, that's how I've gotten a lot of uh, followers versus connections because people start to pay attention like, oh, what does Brian do at Microsoft? And even if they don't know me, they start to follow me because anytime I post something, then they go, oh, there's another interesting fact that I didn't know. And that's someone that starts to um, engage. So that's, mm -hmm. that's why I'd say just grow the process to where over a period of time you're, you're interacting, you're posting things that are relevant. Yeah. And this last one is super interesting to me as a career advisor by training. The question is, should I give a link to my resume on my LinkedIn? I am accustomed to the other way around. Should I include a LinkedIn, you know, call out on my resume? So I'm curious what you think about this. You can go either way um, because it's kind of the mystique of someone who's really interested in, in hiring you and you they, they got connected in your LinkedIn profile. It's kind of like, hey, if you want to connect you with me, reach out and then I'll give you my resume. Um, but you could also do the school of thought where, especially as a student, you wanna give many opportunities to have someone look at it and read through it. And so rather than just submitting it through the, the, the unfortunate sausage grinder that happens with any type of site for job postings, you're allowing that recruiter to just have access to it and then, and then they have immediate access to it. So I don't have a point of view. You could go, there's, there, there, there's you could argue I, either way. I would just say, do whatever's comfortable. I think the one thing that I do provide to students is that besides a resume, if you're proud of, let's say you did a doctoral on some amazing topic and it, it it's something you're proud of that was published. Those are the things that you want to showcase, especially if it's a skill set of something that if you're going to get hired to do research or if you're going to get hired to do social, like I know people get hired to be a social manager to manage tweets and all that stuff. Use examples like, hey, if someone managed the UPS um let's say a social sites like the University of Puget Sound Twitter handle, they should say that. And they should say, hey, here's where me in action where I was managing all these things. And that gives again, really relevant experience that shows real firsthand someone going, oh, that because that doesn't, that doesn't show up as a resume, so. Yeah, that's great. I think what's important is the resume matches the LinkedIn and vice exactly. versa. <laughs> right. it, exactly, it's kind of like what you mentioned Ted on the back and forth they don't have to be exactly the same, but they have to be consistent. Like if you have right. one thing that shows up once, especially job experience, and you don't have one thing on the other one, that's where it creates red flags for recruiters or managers when one thing shows up and another one doesn't show up on the other side. Yeah. And I think we're moving to a place where we really encourage students to keep their address off their resume because nobody that's needs right. to have that. And it's especially important if they're thinking that they're going to link to it from a LinkedIn, you know, if they're going to have a document living somewhere, mm. I don't want to have that personal information. Yeah, no, that, that is a really good thing because it used to be like back in the day, I remember putting your address there and it's like, this is not relevant. What's more relevant is the LinkedIn profile. And that's why the emphasis of, 
because I see a lot of LinkedIn profiles, but it has all the winner numbers and symbols. I'm like, eh, get, get rid of that. Use that professional or use the personalization to that to put that as a starting point. Yeah, yes. Well, thank you. And thank you, Brian and Ted, for hanging out for an extra minutes here to make sure we got to the bottom of all of those questions that came in. Yeah, no, my pleasure.